Welcome to another Looney Tunes review video. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing as it helps out the channel and give this video a like if you do like it. So this is a review for Our Hair Grows in Manhattan, released on the 22nd of March 1947. And there was no blue ribbon reissue and thank goodness so we can actually see the titles of who worked on this cartoon. And we all know it's uh, directed by Frizz Freely. Now, I can't show this cartoon due to copyright on um, over on YouTube, but uh, the best places to watch this short are on the Looney Tunes Golden Collection Volume 3 and Platinum Collection Volume 3. I'll have links below for you to take a look at if you don't um, own them already. And because I can't show you the cartoon, just a quick synopsis. Um, so Bugs Bunny is interviewed about his life growing up before he became famous. So he tells a story of growing up in the streets of Manhattan. The story then pivots to Bugs outwitting a group of hat-wearing dogs who are seeking to rough him up. So, very straightforward. And with me today to discuss this wonderful cartoon is my good friend Blue Genocide. Say hi. Hi, everyone. We definitely wanted you on this one because, you know, you told me you love all these Bugs Bunny ones, especially done by Freeling. Is that right? Yeah, but I find this one to be in... An unusual miss for Freeling, and I'll explain why in a bit. Sure, sure. Um, it, it, it'll be definitely um, interesting because, you know, maybe what you're about to say might co actually coincide with what I'm actually trying to get out, I guess, of my brain, thinking, well, something seems to be missing here. But in any case, let's uh, just go through some trivia, and then we can certainly have a discussion on it. So, first up, uh, you have Bea Benaderet. Um, she plays the character Lola Beverly, who we don't see. We just she's interviewing Bugs, of course. She's based off of Louis, Louis Luella, rather, if I can talk properly today, Parsons, who was a real life movie columnist and screenwriter. Now, this is also one of the sh few shorts that shows Bugs Bunny's past. You got two other shorts that come to mind: uh, Old Grey Hair and What's Up Doc. They're two other um, examples. Now, there was, interestingly enough, and I was very surprised to uh, find out about this, but there was actually an article in de December of 1945 of uh, Coronet Magazine that was uh, a supposedly autobiographical piece by Bugs Bunny himself, recounting about how he grew up in the streets of Manhattan. So this short uses that idea, but it does go off in a bit of a different direction than what was in the written piece, which had, well, some further details on his rise to fame. Now... The book uh, that's featured in the end gag, A Tree Grows in Brooklyn, was showed off in uh, Sentimental Over You, the previous short. Now, here, it's not only used as a prominent gag at the end, it's also what the title of the short plays on. And the book itself, I've since found out, is also a coming-of-age novel. So, there you go. Two more things, and then we'll discuss it. So, um, the Gang of Dogs is likely based on the fictional, fictional uh, Bowery Boys gang uh, who were in a staggering 48 feature length films i mean i was shocked to see that they made so many shorts yeah but feature length but which is pretty interesting and finally the prominent song featured in this short is the daughter of rosie o'grady which is sung by bugs bunny the title of the song and the song itself would be used in a later 1950 film of the same name though the production of that film um the pre-production rather was um for many years beforehand so lots there. So, um, so Blue, what makes you think that this one was a bit of a miss for um, for Freeling? All right. Well, I would say that the framing piece of this being how Bugs, you know, how Bugs' life was back in Brooklyn, I feel like that framing piece is completely unnecessary. We could have easily had a film of Bugs just walking in, you know, living on a Manhattan in a Manhattan street, like a little hole somewhere. Or even in Central Park or something, and that would have been fine. But it really doesn't do anything with the idea of, oh, this is how Bugs became a star. That, that yeah. was done much better later on. And yeah. I know they reused the dog design for later Freeling efforts. But here, you know, we've had better uh, dog pairings against Bugs. And I, I guess Freeling just wanted to have like a very big and burly dog this time instead of the rather normal sized dogs that bugs has been put, put up against beforehand yeah yeah and for like, sure 
the gang of dogs pretty much all disappear except for one of them throughout most of the short. And I guess I didn't <laughs> find most of the gags to uh, fit too well. Okay, uh, that, that, that's interesting. Yeah, because I will say this: I like the gags a lot, lot for a lot of the time. I really did. Um, but I actually, yeah, I happen to agree with you. I, you know, it starts off, yeah, that Bugs is telling a story about his life growing up in Manhattan, you know, and then he seemed to pivot into this completely different thing. And they only reference it once again that there was indeed an interview. And that was that. I mean, I think what What's Up Doc does this sort of thing much better, but that's just, you know, yes, that's just my I, I agree with that. Um, the only gag that really sticks out with me for this cartoon is the where they run into the uh, I don't even know what to call it I guess like 40s version of a vending machine he asks for a nickel <laughs> the dog just gives it to him and then he takes the pie and just shoves it in his face oh I'm sorry you want a cherry and then he throws a, throws another piece in there that's pretty generous two pieces of pie for like five cents even in the 40s like wow oh yeah and how did I know that was going to be your favorite part of this short? I mean, I just, when I watched the short recently, I thought, yeah, this is probably Blue's favorite part. <laughs> you know, I don't know why. Um, it's just my <laughs> sense of humor, I guess. But Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, but, I, I, I don't know. Like, I feel like f- the other Freeling efforts from around the same time, like, we're getting to a couple cartoons I'm very excited for, and I just feel like this one is just lesser. I don't know. Yeah, it's just, I think it's just a, um, a mishmash of maybe two different cartoon ideas that were just put together and, you know, and shipped out the, out the door kind of thing. So, but look, at least some of the gags are funny and, you know, my rating for this one is going to be 7 out of 10 because those those simple gags throughout um, the short are actually quite funny. But I'm not, I, I would rate it higher if it was, as you said before, if it was a short that had a, one consistent idea from start to finish, but... I mean, what what say you? Like, I feel like, okay, I'm going to say 7 out of 10 too, but I feel like if they tied it into the idea later on, like he got discovered while escaping the dogs, I think that could have worked. Yes, yes, that's it. Yep. But you're, there's you're, nothing you're, like that in this. Yeah, you could have had, I don't know, Alma randomly pop up or something as a producer. It's like, uh, wow, I, I saw how you dealt with those dogs. You know, you've got charisma. You've got this and that. Would you like to come to Hollywood or something? I don't know. I don't know. But it's a similar idea of what they did in what, What's Up Doc, which, as we mentioned, is a much better cartoon. So any other final thoughts on this one? Uh, no, I'm just excited for what's coming up. Oh, yes. Yes, we've got some Tweety Pie happening very soon. So um, as always, guys... Thank you for watching these reviews. Feedback is always welcome. And until next time, take care.